everybody, um, welcome to my channel. I'm Kirti Sharma and today I'm going to talk about um, The White Tiger directed by Raman Barani. I think that's how you say his name. It is a movie that's based on a book that I had never heard of. Um, it came out, I think, in the early 2000s, I think. Um, and it was a bestseller. And me being a really big book reader, I don't know how I missed it. Um, anyways, um, right off the bat, I want to say that it's a really good movie. Um, I would recommend people to watch it. Um, it stars Adarsh Gaurav, who plays the main character named Balram. And the supporting cast includes uh, Rajkumar Rao and Priyanka Chopra Jonas, who is also um, a producer for this movie. So first things first, I think the acting was really good um, for Adarsh Gaurav to carry the whole movie essentially on his shoulders. I think it shows how um, confident he is. Um, every dialogue, every scene he was in was great. Um, he was really grounded. I had never seen any of his work before. I don't know if he's a newcomer or not, but if this is his first uh, project, I think he did a phenomenal job. Um, Rajkumar Rao, as always, um, he's dependable, right? Um, he doesn't ever have a false note. Um, I think it was weird seeing him in a primarily English-speaking role. Um, I don't think he's done something like that before, um, but he was really good. Um, he played a guy who's from an affluent family, who's from a powerful family, who had gone to America to study and he gets married there to an Indian American. And he comes back and, you know, he's wrestling with, um, do I incorporate the new American values or do I just come back into the society that I was a part of and pick up from there? And then Priyanka Chopra Jonas plays his wife named Pinky. Um, she is an American, Indian American um, who gets married into this family. It's a new culture. It's a different religion. Um, it's a different class uh, status that she's familiar with. Um, and I think she did a really convincing job playing this character. I think it was like she was playing herself, basically. Um, I could really relate to it because being an Indian American myself, it's jarring sometimes when I have gone to India the handful of times. Um, just how... Things are different. You know, you watch movies, you think you know what it's about, you have family, you know, you have get-togethers, you talk to them, but still it's really uh, weird, you know, um, going from being like a minority, you know, in America and then going to India where, where everywhere you look is someone who looks and talks, you know, um, in a way that mimics you or what your family is, you know, about. Um, getting back to this movie, though, um, I think the screenplay was really nice. I think the way the movie was shot was really nice. It was grounded. It felt real. It felt um, kind of visceral in a way. You could really see the contrast between the affluent society and then the society who, you know, tries their hardest to put food on the table, and even that is not guaranteed. So you see these big skyscrapers, you know, these amazing cars, you know, families who have live-in staff, and then you see individuals who are basically on the road, um, you know, they're working, like, day and night um, for, like, minimum wage, not even minimum wage, you know, they don't even know if the next meal is coming, they don't even know when they're getting paid, they don't even know if they'll be able to take care of their kids or themselves, so I think that contrast was really nice. I'm holding this phone because I have some notes on here and I wanted to hit all my points. Um, but yeah, one other thing before we start talking about a little bit of the specific storyline. I really like the music. I like the blend of hip hop, which felt like an extension of um, Ashok and Pinky who came from America mixed with the Indian music that came. I think it was really nice. I think all the music, you know, gelled with the story, gelled with the characters. Um, and I really like that uh, rap that came at the end credits. I think that was really nice too. Um, one thing that I really liked in this movie was the use of metaphors. Um, there were two. One was um, when Ashok talks, no, not sorry, not Ashok, um, Balram talks about the working class, you know, the um, the help, basically, how they um, are, they're living like in a chicken coop, right? Um, they're all stuck within this cage. They all know what's going to happen. You know, nothing good is going to happen. It's going to be something bad. 
um, but they can't get out of it. You know, no one is trying to get out of it. It's hard to get out of it. You see stuff happening to people around you, but still you're stuck in this, in these four walls, you know, and that's your life. You're doing the same thing again and again, day after day. You're living the same life that people around you live, maybe the previous generations lived. And it's like, dude, how do I get out of this monotony, you know? So I thought that was really nice. Um, the other metaphor I really liked was the white tiger, you know? Here's this magnificent, rare, powerful creature that, you know, isn't out there, um, to the extent as you know the regular tiger is and I think that's really good because it's showing that hey in this mass of like thousands if not millions of working class individuals who are working you know day and night to put food on the table to make ends meet basically um, out of all of that crowd there's gonna be one or two people maybe who shoot out of it you know who are able to rise above all of that so I thought that was really good um, but when uh, Balram sees that white tiger, that white tiger is also in a cage. So you took this powerful, magnificent tiger out of its domain, right? And you have it inside that same cage. So I think that kind of shows that no matter where you are in life, what status you know you have, how much money you have, what your lifestyle is, there's always someone who's going to put you in that box, right? Society has these rules, society has guidelines in place, there's laws and regulations all over the place, and they're going to make sure, you know, that you're in that box. Um, so I thought that was really nice. Um, let's see, what else? I really enjoyed how the movie pointed out the stark differences, um, whether it be lifestyle, whether it be the financial differences, whether it be just language, the exposure you have to things. Um, I think that was really good. Um, I liked how it showed Balram's progression from, you know, coming from a rural area where, you know, you don't even know what internet is. And I think this movie's supposed to take a uh, place in a time where the internet is just coming, you know, and the access is just coming, uh, becoming available to individuals in India. Um, so I think that was nice, but they didn't really um, stay on that topic. Like... They mentioned internet, right? They tried to talk to Balram and ask him, hey, what's the internet? Where can you get it? Do you know what it is? Uh, he doesn't know what it is, you know? Um, but they didn't really harp on it. Like, it just stood in the background as something of a counterpoint between these individuals who know what's going on, know the latest developments, and him, right? Who's working for them, who is basically um, at the outside looking in, right? Um... What else? I think, you know, um, every country has a divide, you know, there's going to be upper class, there's going to be a middle class, there's going to be a lower class, there's going to be a working class. Um, every country has that. But I think, and this could be my own bias, like in America, I don't think you really notice it that much unless you go out looking for it, right? Um, you're in your own bubble, I guess, you know, you're working that nine to five job, you're on that daily grind, and you're not paying attention, maybe. Um, but when you go to India, I think it's really crazy, especially in a city like Mumbai, uh, where you have those crazy skyscra skyscrapers, right? You have the world's richest people living there. And then on the flip side, just a few blocks, streets away, you have uh, the slums. I'm not saying this is just an India thing. Obviously, this happens the world over. But the stark nature of that is just, you know, pow, in your face. And the movie does a good job with that. Um, it also shows like not just class differences, there's like this divide between religions, which is unfortunate. It shouldn't be there, right? No one should be defined or, by the religion, you know, a person is a person is a person. But um, I think it's crazy how, you know, here is another individual, you know, he's doing the same thing, trying to provide for himself, trying to provide for his family. Um, but because he's a different religion, and the family he's working for um, doesn't like that, you know. In this case, um, it's a he's a Muslim. Um, it's just sad, and Balram takes advantage of it, right? Because it's a doggy dog world, right? As long as you're there, I'm not gonna get there. And if I want to get there, I have to take you out. So that's kind of you know what he does. Uh, do I agree with it? No. Do I understand his character's motivation? Yes. Would someone else have done it? Probably, right? Um, if you're in that situation. Um, 
I also like how everyone has a gray tone, right? Or a gray shade. There's no one who's perfect and there's no one who is the worst. Um, did I agree with Balram's uh, choices throughout the movie? No. Do I understand, you know, where the character's coming from? Yes. So I think, you know, that's a big deal, especially, um, not spoiler, huge spoiler, um, you know, when he offs Rajkumar Rao's character, like when he kills him, and I'm thinking, even before I got to that point, I was like, you know, we're following the, the Balram's journey, but I'm not rooting for him, you know, I don't, like, should we root for him? He's not really a good guy. So that was playing on my mind, and then he goes and kills him, you know, to get his money and leave, um, Yes, the buildup was coming, but couldn't he have just, I don't know, knocked him unconscious or left him tied up and stranded in some street or some wood, woody area, you know? Did he have to kill him? And then how did he get away with it, you know? Like, no one noticed that, you know, Balram is magically gone and no one came after him when Rajkumar Rao is supposed to be from a very powerful like loaded family right they have a lot of money so you have a lot of money you have a lot of resources at your hand right so i found it really interesting that you know he just killed somebody and then he's gone to bangalore and now he's like you know running his own business right um on the flip side it was also really messed up how uh, rajkumar rao's family was basically telling balram to take the responsibility of the accident that happened I mean, that's crazy. Um, I don't know, like how, you know, he just went along with it. But once again, you know, when you're that oppressed, when you are that small, I guess, compared to the people around you, uh, I guess you're going to do it. Because if you don't do it, you know, they know where your family lives. They know each member of your family, right? So if you don't listen to them, something's going to happen to them. So I think, you know, that's why he went along with it. And it just goes to show you the power struggle, you know, how much power some people have versus how little power other people have. So I think that was a really nice scene. I think Priyanka Chopra did a really good job. Um, you know, her reaction after the accident, you know, was really nice. Um, she's basically like, hello, I need to go help this child. Is this child alive? We need to get it to a hospital. Where is an ambulance, you know? And the first... Thing that comes up in Balram's mind and then even Rajkumar Rao's ra mind is to get out of here. Like, this is not good. We have to get out before someone sees us, right? Now, in America, like, hit and run is not okay, right? You're going to be in even bigger trouble. So, um, that's something, like, that's how I think, like, the character differences were shown, right? Um, that, hey, she's worried about getting that individual to a hospital and seeing if the individual's okay. And then these people um, who were born and raised and brought up in India are like, you know, yes, this is really bad what happened, but, um, you know, we have to get out of here, especially if you don't want to get uh, caught up in the, you know, the mess afterwards, you know, uh, hospital bills or maybe even um, police, you know, all that mess. Um, so, yeah, I think the movie is really good. I think it did a good job of showing how, like, how much of a dichotomy there is in society. Um, one thing I would have liked is to see a little bit more of, you know, how his life changed maybe after he became that entrepreneur, you know, um, it said, or it showed us, you know, he paid off the cops, he got the drivers with ex expired licenses, um, you know, jailed or arrested, but it didn't say much after that. Now I realize the movie's all about, you know, how he got from point A to point B, but, you know, maybe could have lingered on point B a little bit more to show, hey, what happened, right? Um, how did he actually get there? Because, you know, yes, he's not a bottom feeder anymore, but where is he, you know, on the echelon of things? He's definitely not where Ashok's family is, right? So where exactly is he? Um, yeah, so that's about it. Actually, no, it's not it. Um, one really uh, nice thing that I really liked about this movie was the ending scene, right? Um, basically, he's talking to his employees and he's telling them, hey, you know, for a lot of people or in Bollywood movies, you know, the nightmare is that, you know, you killed 
you offed your boss, right? But the real nightmare is you not doing it, right? Because you wake up every morning and you're in that box and now you don't know what to do, right? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. You know, you're living off scraps and that's your life. So if you want to get out of that life, hey, you might have to take out your boss, right? And then you take it from there. And so he walks off screen and then what are you left with? You know, a huge crowd of his employees, right? Who are like, okay, so is that what you want us to do? Is that what we're supposed to do? Are we the chickens in this chicken coop? Are we going to become that white tiger and now get out, right? So anyways, I think that was really nice. Um, I think the fact that Priyanka Chopra Jonas um, produced this movie or, you know, was a partner in it um, was a really good thing. You know, it, it's going to expose um, Indian content, I guess, um, Indian characters and actors to the global stage. Um, when I watched this movie yesterday, it was trending number five on Netflix in America. So that's a really big thing, you know. Um, yes, there's a lot of things to choose from in Netflix to watch. And the fact that this movie was at um, top five is a really big deal. Especially for like people like us, you know. When born and brought up in the U.S., we never got to see this kind of representation. Um, I remember growing up, there were no Indian channels. <laughs> there were no Indian movies playing. Um, there was no actors that looked like me. There was no actors or singers, you know, that looked like me. So we would latch on to any kind of minority actor or singer, you know, we would see. Um, so it's really nice to see now that people are being exposed to it. So thank you, internet, right? The movie mentions it, right? The internet is a big deal. So because of that, um, I think it's really cool that the world can be exposed to these kind of things. And I'm really excited to see, like, what else Priyanka Chopra is going to do. How is she going to bridge this gap even further? Um, you know, kudos to her to, you know, be one of the individuals who are, who is taking, you know, this responsibility. So anyways, guys, uh, that was my little talk and review on the white tiger. This is my first time doing this. It's kind of nerve wracking, but hey, I thought, you know, it's a pandemic. I have nothing going on. I've been at home for like a year now. Okay. I got to do something. So here's my outlet, right? I'm just going to sit here and talk and maybe there'll be some people that, might want to listen to me, right? So anyways, um, thanks for watching and see you next time.